Buenos nachos, and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be checking out an NES that a customer has sent in for diagnosis. The customer has indicated that the console is outputting a distinctive smell after a couple of minutes of operation. It smells to me like it's electrolytic capacitors that are probably leaking some fluid. But we won't know until we open up the console. In order to make this video a little bit quicker, we're gonna just jump right into inspecting the board. This NES is in pristine condition, as you can tell. Never seen a system that looks this nice. At least not unless it was new out of the factory or out of the box. Prior to the filming of this video, I did power on the console and confirm the customer's symptoms. So I just want to throw that out there. Here's what the NES board looks like. Looks to be in pristine condition, very clean. Looks to have the original capacitors from what I can tell. Let's go ahead and open up this plate right here and see what's going on. Sometimes you need a tool for this, other times you do not. It looks like there's some green stuff right over here. We're going to have to put that under the microscope. And indeed, after we've removed the metal shield, we do have some corrosion. Probably a little bit more than a little bit of corrosion. We have what used to be either a resistor or a capacitor that has completely charred. And it looks like a lot of these lines go to this voltage regulator right here, so this is definitely a sensitive area. We'll begin by taking the large capacitor out, and then we'll clean up this corrosion. And for the desoldering process, we'll be using our Hako FX-951 soldering iron. And we'll be using the T12D24 soldering iron tip. Maybe it's possible that the large capacitor is not the reason for the leaking, but it could be some smaller ones that are over here. That sounds about right. So we'll go ahead and desolder this large one real quick. Might have had some electricity still in it. There's no leaking, but the capacitor does indeed smell. In order to reach the capacitors within the RF module, we're going to have to do some desoldering. So we'll be desoldering this, that way we can get two of them. We're going to try out two desoldering pumps. We'll see which one works best. Hopefully we don't have to use a desoldering wick. So let's go ahead and try out this guy right here. Well, it is removing it. It might be best to just use a desoldering gun, but uh, I don't really feel like hooking that up right now. I think if we can get the majority of this solder out of here and then hit it with the desoldering grade, we'll be good. Unfortunately, the camera was out of frame, but this right here was doing the job. We'll go ahead and do a couple of these. That way we don't have to use as much desoldering braid. Not too shabby. And now we're going to go ahead and use some desoldrin braid for you people that prefer it be called a soldron. When performing some soldering or desoldering, and if you're using some flux, I do highly recommend you are in a well ventilated area. You have either a fume extractor or a fan blowing the smoke away from you. And you wanna make sure these are as loose as possible. Some of these are still attached, so we'll desolder this off camera and we'll be back when this unit is removed. And there we have it. We've removed the RF module, which also provides the electricity. And in case you're wondering what it looks like when this thing is removed, that's pretty much how it is. We'll of course need to clean this up a little bit and obviously all of this. Now that we have this thing dislodged from the board, we can go ahead and pop it open and see what's inside. Now I of course have opened up many of these, but for some of you, it may be your first time. I really don't want to bring out a tool. There we go. And here is what we're working with. We know there's some corrosion, so where is the corrosion coming from exactly? Perhaps the corrosion is coming from this guy. This thing is wiggling right here, from the, and it's corroded. There's just nothing left, and that's gonna be the capacitor leg. So we're gonna clean this up, and we're gonna see what it looks like. I like to start off with some alcohol to clean off the corrosion. We may end up needing some vinegar or some kind of other solution. But first, let's just take a quick look and brush this off. Ah, it looks couldn't be deceiving. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. It looks like the corrosion cleaned up pretty good and that capacitor looks like it's salvageable. As far as the trace damage goes, it doesn't look like it's as bad as I thought, so looks can be deceiving. We will have a lot of touching up to do, 
But first I'm gonna replace these capacitors and then we'll go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and remove the one that is leaking right now. This thing is super slippery. Well, I didn't want to do that, but that's how it came out. And as you can tell, it was leaking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and replace that. And you definitely want to pay attention to your polarity. Positive is on the top. And we're not going to tack this down quite yet. We're just going to bend the legs and get it securely in place. Let's go after this next big one right here, which also seems to be quite loose. All right, whew, this one was a particularly smelly one, also was leaking. Probably gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning up here just to make sure we're still on a good path. Yeah, it should be okay. Now that we have this one anchored down, let's go ahead and remove this tiny one over here. All right, and we got it out of there. Let's run that one through. And we've got it anchored down, and we will take care of this area once we place this capacitor in there. There we go. And now we do have one final capacitor right here in this module. That's this tiny one. All right, looks like we got it. Wasn't easy, very cramped spot. So I wanna desolder this just a tad. And there's another capacitor that needs to be taken care of. And there it goes. Go ahead and fold those legs over. And I'm actually mistaken, there is one more capacitor right here that we need to take care of. All right, and we got it out, or at least most of it. One leg did get stuck in there. In order to properly desolder this capacitor, you need to desolder this leg and this leg that is hiding next to this diode. Go ahead and clean these areas up just a tad. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of solder to some of the areas that I accidentally touched that I thought were actually the capacitor legs. And that one goes right in here. I gotta say, I'm not really much of a fan of recapping these modules. It's a pretty small space. Definitely very intricate work. All right, we're gonna double check that that's all of our capacitors. You also wanna make sure your polarity is good. So uh, we'll have some explosions otherwise. All right, let's go ahead and do some soldering. We may have to scratch away at some of that area. We'll first apply a little bit of flux. Remember, I said a little, but you already know a lot's gonna come out. So we'll probably end up having to do a little bit of cleaning. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a little bit of rebuilding right here. All right, let's try and cut these as delicately as possible. This one's loose. So let's take a look and see what we can do about this one. 
we definitely have a little bit of cleaning to do and that trace right there is going to have to be rebuilt or at least scratched away just enough so that we can connect that leg or we can rat it all the way over there. Let's go ahead and try the drill first. Now we do have to be careful because we do not want this to bridge this larger pad. I don't believe they connect. Just to make sure we have a good bond, we'll expose some meat on these other traces. That way we can just touch up these joints. We'll go ahead and clear this area off. Really gotta stop putting my tools away. And that capacitor looks like it's hanging on by a thread. And let's see what we're working with here. You may be wondering why I cut the leg off first. This is because I don't want any tension when we go to cut the leg after it's been soldered. Just not adhering at all. So I don't believe the capacitor leg is touching this trace right here, so we're going to press this down. That way we can make a better connection. This is too far away, and that's why it wasn't going to connect. A little bit too much solder for my taste, but that will create a good joint. Let's take care of this potential bridge here. And now we have this one right here, which could potentially touch. So we're going to move that. That's not too bad. Better than what I thought we would end up with. There's an awful lot of solder on this leg right here. It's much better. I'm a little scared to touch up this capacitor on this side. It definitely looks like it's not touching. Just added more solder to that pad right there. That's not something I wanted to do. Let's see what our multimeter says about this. We're in continuity mode, so if you have a short, you have a beep, and if you have a beep, you have a short. That means they're connected. So let's see if we can get this to touch without busting the capacitor off. Right there is connected, but not right there. No, would you believe it? Wow, it actually is connected. This definitely does not look like it. Well, it could be because the area is tarnished, so we'll go ahead and clean that up a little bit after we're all done here. Nothing is touching over here. Let's make sure we have continuity from this line right here over here which we do, and that's not bridging. Well, it looks like we don't have a bridge from this trace to this trace, so we're good. And of course, this line is still good. 
I'd say at this moment we're good to call this good. We just need to clean it up. We'll clean this up a little bit more and add our coating. I'm gonna use our ultra powerful chemical here to take care of this. And that should neutralize the corrosion. That'll do. Let's get a Q-tip and brush this around a little bit. Remove some of this excess. And now we're going to need some kind of a UV light. We have our UV light right here. It's powered by USB-C. We've set it for a minute, so we'll go ahead and let it do its thing. And we'll be back after we've resoldered this RF module onto the NES board. All right, so we're going to need to put the shield back on, at least the top piece. And you'll place that right in here. And you want to make sure it's nice and flush. This has no more give. And now we can tack down the anchor points. And you don't want to sit too long on these points right here because they'll start to push through. Because they'll get so hot that they'll just start melting the other side. And there you go. Clean up our work one more time here. We'll go ahead and hook this thing up and see what it's doing. Well, it looks like we have our NES console working. Now, my job is not complete with this NES console. I still have a few more capacitors to replace, and it probably wouldn't hurt to apply some deoxid to the cartridge port. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Until next time.